Anatomy Daha Series Paranasal Sinuses Basic Module Diagram Based Program 2020 Free Medical Education Illustrated and presented by Dr. Abdul Hamid Abdul Rashid Please refer Anatomy Daha Series The Nose Basic Module Introduction to Paranasal Sinuses Para in Greek means beside or adjacent to Nasal in Latin means pertaining to the nose and sinus in Latin means cavity or space Therefore, Paranasal Sinuses means air containing cavities in the bones around the nose Commonly, there are four sinuses on each side of the head. They are sphenoidal sinus, ethmoidal sinus, frontal sinus, and maxillary sinus. Each sinus is usually confined to a bone and named accordingly. However, they often extend to the adjacent bones. The nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses increase the surface area of the upper part of the respiratory tract. They are lined by ciliated mucosal membrane where mucus is secreted by the coplet cells. Vascular plexuses lie deep to the membrane. Paranasal sinuses are complex and consist of extremely narrow spaces and clefts with many nooks and corners. They have a wide range of anatomic variations, both between different people and even between the two sides of the same individual. Very commonly unequal in size and shape. More importantly, the relations around them vary due to abnormal widening and extensions of the sinuses. Therefore, it is crucial for the surgeons to be aware of the anatomic variations and related structures of the sinuses to ensure the efficacy, safe and optimal benefit for the patient in sinus surgery. Due to the vast complexity and wide anatomic variants of the walls of the nose and paranasal sinuses, the author has tried his very best to present the most accepted facts obtained from numerous resources available. Original schematic illustrations are drawn by the author himself for anatomical accuracy and accompany the relevant text for easy understanding. As the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. Skeleton of the nose and paranasal sinuses. The skeleton of the nose and paranasal sinuses are osteocartilaginous framework. That means they are made up of bones and cartilages. In this diagram, we are showing only the bones. The first bone is butterfly shaped called sphenoid bone. It is located at the central part of the base of the skull. Sphenoid bone consists of body. Above the body, there's a pair of small wings called lesser wing of the sphenoid. Behind each lesser wing is bigger wing called greater wing of sphenoids and above the body is a shallow area where pituitary gland is located we call pituitary fossa. Below the body on each side is a pair of flat bones are there called medial and lateral pterygoid plate. The body consists of sphenoidal air sinus. This is the second bone called palatine bone. It has two parts. 
This is perpendicular plate of the palatine bone and this is horizontal plate of the palatine bone. The third bone is ethmoid bone. It is also centrally located bones at the base of the skull, just anterior to the sphenoid bone. Both sphenoid and ethmoid bones are single bones. This is flat triangular bone called crystal calli. On either side of crystal calli is perforated plates called cribriform plates. Below the crystal calli is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Then on the lateral side of the ethmoid bone is lateral mass of the ethmoid bone. This lateral mass consists of ethmoidal air sinuses. Next is maxillary bone, huge bone. This is the body of the maxilla. This process is called frontal process of the maxilla because it will articulate with the another bones up there, the frontal bone. That's why it is called frontal process of the maxillary bones. Inside the body of the maxilla is maxillary air sinus. The fifth bone is the lacrimal bone. It's a very small flat bone in front of the ethmoid bone. And in front of the frontal process of the maxilla is another bone, that is the nasal bone. In this slide, we have two diagrams. First diagram A shows bones around the nasal cavity and anterior nasal opening. Here you can see all the bones around the nasal cavities are in front nasal bone frontal process of the maxilla, lacrimal bone, ethmoid bone, palatine bone, and here is the medial pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone. Above, the roof is formed by cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. The floor is formed by the body of the maxilla. We are going to show that one in the next diagram. So all these things are forming the bones around the nasal cavity. This is the anterior nasal opening. Superiorly, we have two nasal bones are bounding this cavity. And then on each side is frontal process of the maxilla. Inferiorly is bodies of two maxilla. Everything's mentioned here. Diagram B is inner surfaces of the nasal cavity and posterior nasal opening. Inner surfaces are, we can see, this is the right lateral wall, inner surface of the right lateral wall, and this is the upper surface of the palate, that is the one, heart palate, okay. Again, the bones are, you know, just now, this is nasal, frontal process of the maxilla, lacrimal bone, ethmoid bone, perpendicular plate of the palatine bone, and this is the medial pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone. In this lateral wall, you will see two openings. The one in front is bigger. We are going to talk this one later. The one behind is between the medial pterygoid plate of the uh, sphenoid bone and perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. Between these two bones, we have a sphenopalatine foramen is there. This is, this is lateral entrance to the nose. Now, this is the flow of the nose. Anterior three quarter is formed by the palatine plate of the maxillary bone. Posterior one quarter is formed by the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Two together form the flow of the nose, or also called heart palate, which separates the nasal cavity above from the oral cavity below. Behind here is posterior nasal opening called koana. It is bounded superiorly by the body of the sphenoid. On each side is 
medial telecoid plate of the sphenoid. Inferiorly is the horizontal plate of the palatine bones, two palatine bones. So all four sides of the posterior opening is bounded by bones. Structures of the lateral nasal wall. Lateral nasal wall consists of so many structures are there. First group is bones involved from anterior to posterior are this is nasal bone, frontal process of the maxilla, lacrimal bone, ethmoid bone, perpendicular plate of the palatine bone, and medial pterygoid plate. This is ethmoid bone and this is maxillary bone. Between these two, there is a shallow gap is there, which is partially closed by thin plate of bones called uncinate process which leaves a shallow semilunar shape gap here called hiatus semilunaris. This is medial surface of the ethmoid bone. At the lower part of the medial surface of the ethmoid bone, we have a bony prominence there called ethmoidal bulla, which is above the hiatus semilunaris. Ethmoidal bulla may be solid or contains cluster of air cells. Nasal conchae or doublet. Actually, we have already presented this topic in the nose file. What are the nasal conchae or doublet? Nasal conchae or doublet are shelf-like curved bony projections on the internal surface of the lateral nasal wall. They are three in number, superior, middle, and inferior. Superior turbinate is the smallest, high up there. It is about 7 to 27 millimeter long. The middle one is about 30 to 54 millimeter long. Then inferior one is the longest, about 35 to 58 millimeter long. Superior and middles are attached to the medial surface of the ethmoid bone. The inferior turbinate is the largest and is a separate bone made up of bones and erectile tissue. It is a separate bone. Recess and meatuses. We are showing the diagrams of inner surface of right lateral nasal wall. What are the recess and meatuses? They are areas or passages on the internal surface of the lateral nasal wall. They are related to the turbinate. Let's see few structures on this wall now. Very high up here is cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. This is superior turbinate. This is middle terminate and this is inferior terminate. Now we are going to talk about the passages or spaces related to the terminate. Above the superior terminate, that is between the cribriform plate and superior terminate, is a passage there in front of the sphenoid bone called sphenoethmoidal recess. So sphenoadmiral recess is above the superior terminate, below the cribriform plate. Next, we are going to talk about the meatuses. Superior meatus. Superior meatus is underneath the superior terminate. This is superior meatus. Then middle meatus. Middle meatus is under the middle terminate, this is middle meatus. Then inferior meatus, which is under the inferior terminate, this is inferior meatus. Anterior view of the skull, this is frontal bone, this is zygomatic bone, this is maxillary bones, and this is the mandible. 
This is observed cavities. This is nasal cavity. If you see, here is two nasal bones above the nasal cavity. It is articulated to the frontal bone and the junction here is called nation at the center between the nasal and frontal bone. This is left orbital cavity. Above here, there is a ridge called superciliary ridge. And here, this is the orbital margins of the right orbit. This margin is called supraorbital margin. Supraorbital margin. The paranasal sinuses, general locations. Paranasal sinuses are air containing cavities in the bones around the nose. There are altogether four pairs, four on each side of the skull. The paranasal sinuses are frontal sinuses, sphenoidal sinuses, ethmoidal sinuses and maxillary sinuses. Frontal sinuses are inside the frontal bone, one on each side above the supraorbital margins of the orbital cavity. Sphenoidal sinuses are deep inside the skull in the body of the sphenoid bone. Atmoidal sinuses are in the lateral mass of the ethmoid bone, one on each side. Okay. And maxillary sinuses are in the body of the maxilla. If you look from the lateral side, this is the frontal sinus, this is sphenoidal sinus, this is ethmoidal sinus. Actually, ethmoidal sinuses are three in three groups in the lateral mass of the ethmoid bone. This is maxillary sinus in the body of the maxilla. Frontal sinuses, location and vertical extent. A pair of frontal sinuses are located in the frontal bone. Each is above and deep to the medial part of supraorbital margin. This area is the medial part of the supraorbital margin. The frontal sinuses are above this supraorbital margin. It is irregular pyramidal in shape. The frontal sinuses are often asymmetric. The septum between the two sinuses is seldom in the middle, occasionally incomplete or deficient. The vertical extent varies from 24.3 mm to 66 mm. The duct of the frontal sinus, frontonasal duct, commonly opens into the ethmoidal infundibulum in middle meatus. Sizes of the frontal sinuses. This is superior view of the anterior cranial fossa. This is crystalline. On each side is cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Anterior to the crystalline, there is a small foramen present called foramen cecum. Through this foramen, veins from the nose will come and enter into the anterior cranial fossa and join with the superior sagittal sinus. So, if there is an infection in the nose, through this foramen, it may spread to the superior sagittal sinus. This is optic chasma. This is optic nerve. This is obital plate of the frontal bone. Underneath it, we have obital cavity. This, these are horizontal section of the frontal sinuses. They are located between the outer and inner tables of the frontal bone. 
The average sizes are transverse diameter is about 25 mm and through posterior diameter is about 18 mm and vertical diameter is about 24 mm. Asmoidal sinuses Asmoidal air sinuses are clusters of thin walled honeycombed air cells in the lateral masses of the atmoid bone. They are also known as labyrinth, a system of intercommunicating cavities. They are arranged in three main groups, anterior, middle and posterior group of air cells separated by septa. This is anterior group, this is middle group and this is posterior group inside the lateral mass of the ethmoid bone. Anterior group consists of about 11 air cells. Middle group consists of about 1 to 3 air cells. And posterior group consists of about 1 to 7 air cells. This is the anterior view of the scar. We are going to discuss about the maxillary sinuses. This is zygomatic bone. This is maxillary bone. This is zygomatic process of the maxilla. This part is the body of the maxilla. Maxillary sinuses were first reported in 1651 by Nathaniel Hymo and thus it is also known as Entrum of Hymo. It is the largest of the paranasal sinuses occupies the body of the maxilla. Its shape is a four-sided pyramidal shape, consists of a base, an apex, and four walls. Base, apex, and four wall. Maxillary sinus continuation is an enlarged maxillary sinus. Look here at the picture, in the picture. This is the base of the maxillary sinus. This is the apex of the maxillary sinus. Base of the maxillary sinus is directed medially towards the lateral wall of the nose and its apex is directed laterally into the zygomatic process of the maxilla. Base is directed medially towards the lateral wall of the nose and apex is directed laterally towards the zygomatic bone. It is often enlarged and the apex extends laterally into the zygomatic bone. You can see in this picture. Walls of the maxillary sinus. The maxillary sinus is a four-sided pyramidal shaped cavity which consists of a base, an apex and four walls. Very first one is the base. Red color number one. You look here in this diagram. The base of the maxillary sinus is this is the base of the maxillary sinus which is related to the lateral wall of the nose. Second is the apex. This is the apex of the maxillary sinus directed towards the zygomatic bones, sometimes it extends into the zygomatic bone. Next, number three is the superior wall or roof of the maxillary sinus. It is also forming the floor of the orbital cavity. Through this, we have infraorbital nerve and infraorbital vessel traversed through this wall. Next, number four, inferior wall or floor of the maxillary sinus. They are also alveolar part of the maxilla. It is about 1 to 1.25 centimeter lower than the floor of the nasal cavity. It is closely related to the roots of the upper molar and premolar teeth. Next is number five, that is 
anterior wall. Look at this triangle. This is related to the cheek. And number six is the posterior wall. Number six is tiny little triangle facing backwards towards the infratemporal fossa and pterygopalatine fossa. Maxley's sinus has a capacity of approximately 15 mil in adults. The ostium, the opening of the maxillary sinus is high up in its base. We will show you in the next slide. Structures related to the base of the maxillary sinus. This is the base of the maxillary sinus. This direction is anterior. This is upper border, posterior border, inferior border, and anterior border of the base of the maxillary sinus. The base of the maxillary sinus is directed to the lateral wall of the nose. This we have already stated earlier. The maxillary ostium, that is the opening of the maxillary sinus, is at the upper part of the base. You can see here this ostium at the upper part of the base. It commonly, that is in about 68%, opens into the hiatus semilunaris of the middle meatus. This is nasolacrimal duct through which the tears is drained down. So this nasolacrimal duct is deep to the base of the maxillary sinus. The distance of maxillary ostium from the roof is about 1.3 mm and from the nasolacrimal duct is about 4.5 mm. Flow of the maxillary sinus Its relations to the roots of the teeth the flow of the maxillary sinuses are the alveolar part of the maxilla. This is the alveolar part of the maxilla. It is about 1 to 1.25 cm lower than the flow of the nasal cavity. Flow of the maxillary sinus is at this level. Flow of the nasal cavity is at this level. So flow of the maxillary sinus is about 1 to 1.25 cm lower than the flow of the nasal cavity. Therefore, flow of the maxillary sinus is closely related to the roots of the upper molar and premolar teeth. These are molar and premolar teeth, which is very close to the flow of the maxillary sinus. Therefore, infection can spread to the maxillary sinuses from the carious teeth. The flow is often perforated by roots of the teeth. Extraction of these teeth can cause oroantral fistula. Clinical correlation of the maxillary sinuses. Maxillary sinuses are the largest paralysal sinuses and they are most commonly infected called sinusitis. It is due to many factors. Maxillary sinuses are located at the lowest level, inferior to the other sinuses, and even its floor is much lower than that of the nasal cavity. Therefore, the drainage from the other sinuses and from the nasal cavity very often flows into it. It acts as a secondary reservoir for the mucus from other places, which could be infected mucus and pus. Its floor is extremely thin, which forms the roof of the mouth. Therefore, infection can spread to the maxillary sinuses from below through the roots of the carious upper molar and premolar teeth. It is also common in cases of 
oroentrum fistula, that is abnormal communication between the oral cavity and the maxillary sinus after tooth extraction. Furthermore, the opening that is ostium of the maxillary sinus is located high up on its basal surface related to the lateral wall of the nose and the opening is very close to the roof. Thus, it is very unlikely to have drainage by gravity as in other sinuses. Infected mucus is thus collected and leads to sinusitis of the maxillary sinus. Sphenoidal sinuses. This is the body of the sphenoid bone, mid-sagittal section. This is cella tussica, occupied by the pituitary gland. This is optic nerve. This is sphenoidal sinus. Sphenoidal sinuses are a pair of sinuses located in the body of the sphenoid bone. Very often, sphenoidal sinuses are asymmetric. The septum is seldom in the middle, occasionally incomplete or deficit. Thus, the size of the sphenoidal sinuses varies from small to very large, occupied the anterior part of the body of the sphenoid to the entire body of the sphenoid. Relations of the sphenoidal sinuses. The diagram is the mid-sagittal section of the sphenoidal sinus. Sphenoidal sinus is related to many structures. Superior and anteriorly, olfactory tract, optic chiasma, frontal lobe, in the anterior cranial fossa, superior and posteriorly pituitary gland in cella tussica, laterally cavernous sinus with the internal carotid artery, cranial nerves third, fourth, sixth, and first and second divisions of the trigeminal cranial nerves. We'll see in next slide. Posteriorly middle cranial fossa basilar artery and the brainstem, inferiorly nasopharynx, pharyngeal limb nodes, and anteriorly nasal cavity. Sphenoidal sinus in relation to the cavana sinus. This is a pair of sphenoidal sinus in the body of the sphenoid bone. Above is the pituitary gland. Lateral to the pituitary and sphenoidal sinus is the cavernous sinus, number one. Inside the cavernous sinus, we have an internal carotid artery and six cranial nerve. Number two, on the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus, you can see here, oculomotor nerve, that is the third cranial nerve, trochlear nerve, fourth cranial nerve, and then below is ophthalmic V1 and maxillary V2 divisions of the trigeminal nerve. The sixth cranial nerve is inside together with the internal carotid artery. Infrolateral to the sphenoidal sinus is the pterygoid canal with the nerve of pterygoid canal, also known as median nerve. Ostia, that is opening of paranasal sinuses on the right lateral nasal wall. Ostia, openings of sphenoidal sinus, frontal sinus, posterior, middle, and anterior ethmoidal sinuses, and maxillary sinus. Before we talk about the ostia, shall we see the structures on the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. This is cribriform plate. This is superior terminate. This is middle terminate. And this is inferior terminate. The space or passage between the cribriform plate 
and superior tablet is sphenoadmoidal recess in front of the body of the sphenoid. The spec passage under the superior tablet is superior meatus. The passage under the middle tablet is middle meatus. The passage under the inferior tablet is inferior meatus. Now let's talk about the ostia. The first one is sphenoidal ostium, that is the opening of the sphenoidal sinus. It opens into the sphenoadmoidal recess. This is the opening of the sphenoidal sinus. It opens into the sphenoadmoidal recess, which is between the cribriform plate and superior tabernacle. Next is posterior atmoidal ostium, that is opening from the posterior atmoidal air cells. It will open into the superior meatus. This is the opening of posterior atmoidal sinus. Next is frontal ostium. This is the frontal sinus. From there, frontal nasal duct is coming down and then it's open into the infundibulum which will open to the anterior part of hiatus semilunaris. So your frontal ostium is here at the anterior end of the hiatus semilunaris. Next is middle admoidal ostium. It opens on the bulla or upper part of the bulla in the middle meatus. Next is anterior atmoidal ostium. It opens to the anterior half of the hiatus semilunaris in the middle meatus. Next is maxillary ostium. It opens into the posterior half of the hiatus semilunaris of the middle meatus. This is the opening of the maxillary ostium. And finally, in the inferior meatus, we have the opening, but it is not from the sinus, but it comes from the nasolacrimal duct, opening of the nasolacrimal duct at your inferior meatus. It is about anterior junction between anterior one-third and posterior two-third junctions located there. Arterial supply of the paranasal sinuses. Blood supply and nerve supply of the paranasal sinuses follow the embryological origin. Frontal and admoidal sinuses are from the frontonasal prominence of the first pharyngeal arch. Therefore, they are supplied by the branches of the artery of the frontonasal prominence, the ophthalmic artery, which comes from the internal carotid artery. Maxillary and sphenoidal sinuses are from the maxillary prominence of the first pharyngeal arch. Therefore, they are supplied by the branches of the artery of the maxillary prominence the maxillary artery from the external carotid artery. Frontal sinuses. Frontal sinuses are supplied by anterior admoidal artery, supraorbital artery, supratrochlear artery from the ophthalmic artery of the internal carotid system. Admoidal sinuses. Admoidal sinuses are supplied by the anterior admoidal artery and posterior admoidal artery from the ophthalmic artery of the internal carotid system. Maxillary sinuses. Maxillary sinuses are supplied by the sphenopalatine artery, infraorbital artery, alveolar artery from the maxillary artery of the external carotid system. Sphenoidal sinuses. Sphenoidal sinuses are supplied by the sphenopalatine artery and pharyngeal artery from the 
maxillary artery of the external carotid system. Branches of the external and internal carotid arteries anastomose in the nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses, one of the sites where two systems anastomose. Venous drainage, nerve supply, and lymphatic drainage of the paranasal sinuses. This column is about the venous drainage, this is about the nerve supply, and this is about the lymphatic drainage of the paranasal sinuses. They are frontal sinus, admiral sinus, maxillary sinus, and sphenoidal sinus. Venous drainage of the paranasal sinus. Frontal sinus is drained by anterior admiral vein into superior ophthalmic vein and finally into the cavernous sinus. Admiral sinuses are drained by anterior and posterior admiral veins into the superior ophthalmic veins and finally into the cavernous sinus. Maxillary sinuses are drained by alveolar veins which drains into the sphenopalatine vein and into the pterygoid plexus of veins and finally into the cavernous sinus. Sphenoidal sinuses are drained by posterior admiral vein into the sphenopalatine vein to pterygoid plexus of vein and finally to the cavernous sinus. Nerve supply. Frontal sinus is supplied by supraobital nerve that is the ophthalmic nerve that is first division of trigeminal nerve. Admiral sinus is supplied by anterior and posterior admiral nerves from the nasociliary nerves that is from the ophthalmic nerve from the first division of the trigeminal nerve. Maxillary sinus is supplied by infraobital nerve anterior, middle and posterior branches of the superior alveolar nerve from maxillary division, that is the second division of the trigeminal nerve. Sphenoidal sinus is supplied by posterior admiral nerve from nasociliary nerve from ophthalmic, that is the first division of the trigeminal nerve. Lymphatic drainage. The lymphatic of the paranasal sinuses form a capillary network in the mucosal lining and drain into from frontal sinus, drain into submandibular nodes, admiral sinus to retropharyngeal nodes and submandibular nodes, maxillary sinus into submandibular nodes, sinusoidal sinus into retropharyngeal nodes. This is right anterolateral view of the neck showing the lymph nodes of the neck, Robin's level. This is high white bone, a, an imaginary line crossing just below the high white bone is called high white line. This is thyroid gland. Deep to the thyroid gland is the cricoid cartilage. Another imaginary transverse line at the level of cricoid cartilage is called cricoid line. This is the body of the hyoid bone. This is anterior belly of digastric muscles, right and left. This little triangle above the body of the hyoid bone is the submental triangle. At the tips here, we have submental limb nodes. This is Robin's level 1A. This is inferior border of the mandible. This is anterior belly of digastric. This is posterior belly of digastric. This area is your digastric triangle, which is divided into two parts. The anterior part where we have submandibular salivary glands and submandibular limb nodes we call 
Robbins level 1B. Posterior part, if you see here, this is internal jugular veins crossed by posterior belly of the digastric. We have another group of limb nodes are there called jugulodigastric nodes. That is Robbins level 2. Below the posterior belly of digastric and anterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle and behind the strap muscle is our carotid triangle. Is there? Big one. And we have superior belly of omohyoid muscle is dividing this big triangle into two smaller triangles. This is the triangle where we have a carotid vessels and jugular veins is present. This is where we call as Robbins level 3. And below this muscle, this small little triangle where your superior belly of omohyoite is crossing the jugular vein is called jugulohomohyoite nodes or Robbins level 4. Posterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscles, here is another triangle, posterior triangle of the neck. Behind is our trapezius muscle. This is 11 cranial nerve, also known as accessory nerve. The area above the accessory nerve is the Robbins level 5A, as a limb notice there. Below is Robbins level 5B. This is muscular triangle in front between the strap muscles. This is Robbins level 6. Here is the sternum. Behind the sternum is Robbins level 7. Lymphatic drainage of the paranasal sinuses. Lymphatic of the paranasal sinuses form the capillary network in their lining mucosa, which together with the lymphatics of the nasal cavities drain into the lymph nodes at the following levels. Level 1b, retropharyngeal and submandibular nodes. This is the one. From level 1b drains to level 2, that is also called jugulodigastric nodes or also called as superior deep cervical group. So this is the superior deep cervical group. From level 2 drains to level 4, which is inferior deep cervical group, also called jugulohomohyoid nodes. From there, on the right side, through the right lymph duct, and on the left side, through the thoracic duct, drain into the venous system. Development of the paranasal sinuses. Mucous membrane of the nasal cavity is lined by respiratory mucosa, that is pseudo-stratified ciliated columnar epithelium with mucus secreting goblet cells. Paranasal sinuses are developed as diverticular of the nasal mucosa of superior, lateral and anterior mucosa walls. They extend into the surrounding bones and dilate into frontal, ethmoidal, maxillary and sphenoidal sinuses. They reach the maximum size during puberty. This diagram is the coronal section of the paranasal sinuses on the left side of the nose. These are the color boxes showing the size of the age group. For example, this yellow color means at birth, blue color means one year and etc. like that. So this is frontal sinus, this is maxillary sinus. In frontal sinus, there is no yellow color, means it is not present at birth. But it has blue color, so that means it is formed 
at one year age group. Green color up to here shows that at seven years, it is about this size. In the case of maxillary sinus, you can find yellow color. That means that it is present at birth, maxillary sinus. Say green color means maxillary sinus is about this size at the age of seven years. This is name of the sinuses, status of each sinus, first radiologic evidence. Maxillary sinus present at birth form at about fourth month of intrauterine life. First radiologic evidence is at about four to six months after birth. Admiral sinus present at birth First radiologic evidence is at about one year after birth. Frontal sinus not present at birth. First radiologic evidence is at about six years after birth. And sphenoidal sinus not present at birth. First radiologic evidence is at about four years after birth. Sequence of development is from inferior to superior. That means maxillary first, admoidal second, frontal third, and finally sphenoid is, sinus is formed. Functions of the paranasal sinuses Mucous membrane of the nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses are lined by respiratory epithelium, that is, pseudo stratified columnar ciliated epithelium with mucus secreting goblet cells. We have already stated this earlier. Paranasal sinuses increase the surface area of the uppermost part of the respiratory tract. However, it is not clear about the functions of the paranasal sinuses. Probably, they are to provide resonance to the voice, to adjust the temperature and humidity of the inspired air closer to the body's need, as defense, trapping the dust and the microorganisms by mucus and sweeping out to the nasal cavity by cilia, to provide local immunological defense, to lighten the skull and for the growth of skeletal of the face after birth. References Thank you. For further reading, CT Normal Anatomy of Paranasal Sinuses. Anatomy Daha Series Free Medical Education The End Thank you. Illustrated and presented by Dr. Abdul Hamid Abdul Rashid, Program Advisor, Dr. Ramita Wiza O.K. Ramat, Contents Advisor, Dr. Yu Zing Yi, Technical Advisor, Dr. An Seng Beng. For the benefit of future users, the author welcomes short comments and suggestions from the readers. Thank you.